So if you've clicked on this video, you understand cinema rigs take a long time to perfect. And most of the time we're switching out parts all the time. So most of the time, all the time, that's because they're just customizable. Our needs change, different shooting scenarios change. You might see something new that comes out and it's slightly better than the last thing that you bought. But for a while, I've been building out the cinema rig. So if you clicked on this video, that means that you are either discontent, you're curious, or you might just be wondering how I only spent $6,000 on this $12,000 cinema rig. That's not clickbait at all. That's actually what happened. So if you're curious at all, stick to the end of the video to find out. I'm gonna go piece by piece into why I chose these specific parts for this rig. I've tried almost every single thing you could imagine for the red Komodo, small rig, condor blue, tilta, bright tangerine, wooden camera. I haven't tried any of the shape stuff, but I've tried most of the things that you can buy for the red Komodo. Even some of the things on this current rig, I wish were slightly different, which I'll go into, but let's not waste any more time and let's dive right in. So we'll first start off with the body. If you didn't know already, the red Komodo doesn't come ready to go out of the box. Yes, you can just put a lens on it and put a battery and then you could use it. But it being a cube shaped cinema camera means that you need a cage to put on it. And I've tried every single cage out there, the Tilta one, the small rig one, the Condor Blue, Bright Tangerine, all of them. And I ended up with something super simple, which is the GDU Timmy ribs. I kept finding different quirks about the other cages and I would need one side and I wouldn't need the other. And to buy one side was just, expensive and didn't make any sense. And then the, it was this whole thing. So I opted for getting one GDU Timmy rib for the right side of my Komodo. And then on the other side, I got the red wing grip so I can have something to hold if someone was pulling focus or something like that. I did try the GDU curved handle, but it didn't feel right. It didn't work well with my hands and it just was uncomfortable for me personally. So I opted for this one. And as you can see right here, I'm actually able to install a cold shoe mount. So if I wanted to put my wireless lav receiver or just a shotgun mic or anything like that, I could just put it right there and use it in that way. This side handle just worked better for me personally. Now for the next piece that I really have a love-hate relationship with, it's the red outrigger handle. I don't know why it's so good. I can't really put my finger on it, but I tried hating it. I tried using other handles. I even tried the, the Tilta one with a NATO rail. I tried a bunch of different wooden handles and I always kept coming back to this one. I actually bought the Outrigger handle, sold it, repurchased it, sold it again, and then purchased it another time because I kept trying to find different solutions. I think it has something to do with the fact that it connects to the top of the Komodo and it's such a sturdy, hard metal that when you're shooting handheld, it makes getting stable footage a lot easier. It keeps the center of gravity just compact. The one caveat with the outrigger handle is that when you have it on top of your Komodo, whatever top handle situation you have will probably sit a lot taller, which leads me to the next part of the rig. So I chose the wooden camera top rail system and there are many reasons for this. One of the reasons being that it could connect perfectly to the outrigger handle and it sits super low. So the wooden camera top handle is already really low. So when you have the added height of the outrigger handle, it makes it like a normal sized top handle. Another reason I chose it is because you can slide it back and forth. This is super important because I have super heavy lenses as well as small, tiny vintage lenses. So when I'm using tiny vintage lenses like these, the center of gravity is much more towards the back. So what I can do with this handle is I can move it all the way to the front so my rig is way more balanced. If I'm using a much more front heavy setup like cinema lenses or my Aviscope adapter with a matte box or anything like that, I could slide the handle to a position where it's just much more balanced. This saves a ton of time as opposed to rigging it out in a certain way to where I need to find a better balance. If you don't know already, keeping proper weight distribution in your cinema rig is a huge, huge factor in getting stable handheld footage. There's also one other reason that I'll touch on real quick and we'll move on to the next part, is I can easily swap from using the handle to using the monitor attachment if I don't want a top handle, I wanna keep my rig super compact. I just slide this attachment to the top and I can use my monitor without the top handle and have a compact rig. One last thing I wanna talk about with this handle is it's actually not the most comfortable, which is really unfortunate. It's not the least comfortable. 
but it has these jagged edges right here that do dig into your skin if you're gripping it really tightly for a long period of time. That's a little unfortunate and that's one reason why I would get rid of it. But in my opinion, it's the best solution I've found comparing all the other ones. So the next part is not as fun per se, but it's still necessary nonetheless, is the battery solutions. I actually really don't like what I chose. I've tried them all besides the Mutiny one, which is probably what I'll go for, but this is working and I've had zero issues with. It's the Tilta Advanced Power Module. I got this originally because it had an extra control port and I couldn't find any other solutions. I didn't want to drop the money for the Mutiny one, but I'll probably be doing that in the future. It works, it's solid metal, it's really sturdy. Besides the back part is plastic. People have said they had issues with theirs and I'm really hoping <laughs> I never have issues with mine, but so far it's so good. The people that I know personally haven't had any issues, so it's what I have for now. For battery solutions, I've tried many and these are the best. They're the Core SWX Nano Micro Series batteries. I have a 98 watt hour battery and a 150 watt hour battery. There's really not much to say about the batteries. They're really good, super solid. I have the dual charger for them. They have a PTAP solution as well as a USB port. Not as many ports as I wish it would have had, but the Tilt Advanced module has plenty of ports already. So uh, I'm good with these. So let's get into the monitors I use with the Komodo. Yes, I said monitors. I'm actually really picky about the monitors that I choose. I like enjoying the image that I'm seeing when I'm shooting on set and I've tried plenty of monitors that just look like complete trash. They may have the features and all these different things and even the nits, but they look really, really bad. It can be the color fidelity, it can be saying they're 10-bit, but they have banding issues all over. One of my favorite monitors is the Small HD ND7. I actually have this with Komodo control. I don't really use the Komodo control that much, so it kind of feels like a waste of money to me, but I do like keeping my rigs compact. So most of the time I use the port keys BM5 WR. It's the one that can control the Komodo directly in the monitor. Although this is the monitor I use most of the time and I'll probably sell the small HD ND7, I am compromising with this monitor. The image quality is not on par with the small HD. The color fidelity is you have to really tweak it to get it to match. And it does have that banding issue that I was talking about. I don't know if with firmware it got better, but it doesn't seem as bad as it used to be. Controlling the Komodo on this monitor actually works pretty well. And one feature that I really, really, really enjoy and I wish the Small HD had are these physical buttons on the top. They're actually custom buttons, so you could put whatever features you want in there and save it as a preset. I could use the first button to toggle peaking, the second one for false color. Whatever tools that I need, I can just turn them off and on with a button on the top instead of having to touch my monitor and go through a menu and then get tons of fingerprints on my monitor. So that's something I really enjoy about this monitor. I do wish the image quality was a lot better. But for the price, it's a really good monitor and yeah, it's just tactile, functional tool. Like cages, monitors, and every part of my Komodo rig, I've tried so many different solutions and the Bright Tangerine left field base plate is by far, by far the best solution out there and it is by far the most expensive, but I didn't think it was gonna be worth it. I figured I would try it out and if I didn't want it, I could sell it, but it is 100% worth it. There are so many things about this base plate that just work. And I wish other base plates would do it because it doesn't seem like it costs a lot of money. It's just over-engineered. This is probably one of the most over-engineered base plates possible. I'm not gonna to go too in depth into it. There are a couple features, like right here, it only has one locking knob for your rail system. So you just loosen that and you can move your rail system front and back. The knob for the RE dovetail plate is extremely sturdy and there's no way that you'll make a mistake with this. One, it has this little notch right here that keeps it from unlocking accidentally. And then it has a two stage locking mechanism. The first one allows you to slide your camera in and out of the dovetail and the second one is so you can just pop it off and on which makes it extremely useful and quick. I've never seen base plates do this really well. Normally it's a couple steps or it's not as fluid and feel as good as this one. So for the base, this is gonna save you around $70. Instead of buying the Bright Tangerine base that is basically just a DJ RS2 or RS3 plate, I bought the Small Rig RS2 plate that has two points of contact so it's not wiggling 
and it's the same exact height as the Bright Tangerine. So it still lets you have that standard LWS height between your sensor and the bottom of your base. Since we are talking about the bottom rail system, I do use just some normal small rig carbon fiber rails that are connected to the tilt a mat box. I chose this one because it was just the most versatile for me personally. I do have the dual stage. I normally use the variable ND for run and gun situations. And with the whole bright tangerine locking system, I can slide it in and out if I wanna change lenses super easy and super quickly. Moving on to more of what's in front of the lens, I use a speed booster 95% of the time. And I had a really hard time finding any content whatsoever on this speed booster. It's the Metabones Cine version, EF to RF. This for me is the best solution out there. I've tried the Canon one. I tried the Viltrox one. I've tried the other Metabones one. And this one for me is the best solution. I'll explain why. This makes zero sense to me, but the RF mount on the Komodo has the most play on any camera I've ever owned. What this means is you have to find a lens mount that has a locking solution so it doesn't wiggle on the RF mount as well as a locking solution for the front part. The Metabone Cine EF to RF adapter is the only one that has both, that I know of at least. And it was really hard to find any content on it so I took a risk in actually buying this adapter. I did plenty of tests comparing it to the Canon one and it does hold its weight. I haven't seen a ton of fault points with this adapter. In my test, there was an interesting flare, but I actually liked it to be honest. But yeah, in my opinion, this is the best speed booster that you can buy for the Red Komodo. And lastly, it's the lenses. I'm really not gonna talk too much about this because it's not essentially a part of the Komodo rig. I use them with all my other cameras, but I use the DZO Vespid Cine Primes as well as some Contact Zeiss vintage lenses. These are when I'm doing bigger production shoots, which is what I use the Komodo for most of the time anyways. But if I am shooting running gun with a Komodo, let's say it's a high budget event, I will just use the Sigma 24 to 70 because I just have better coverage anyways. And I don't wanna switch out prime lenses all the time for event coverage. But yeah, that's basically it for the Komodo build. And now for the story behind how I bought this for $6,000, even though it's a $12,000 rig. So I actually buy and sell things all the time. It's one of my passions and side hustles. And actually when I was a kid, I think I was nine years old, I was into like the goth, like punk rock, whatever, emo phase. And those studded belts at the time were in style. And I knew they sold for like 20 or 30 bucks. I went to a flea market one day and saw them for $2. I ended up buying 20 of them for 30 bucks and went back to my school and sold them for 10. $20 a piece. So this buying and selling mentality has been a part of me since as long as I can remember. The same thing essentially happened with the Komodo. I saw this Komodo package for around 11 grand. I offered the guy 9.5, he took it. I got that Komodo and then ended up selling all the pieces I didn't need for around five grand. So at that point I'm at 4,500 and I purchased the rest of the parts with the extra $1,500. I was gonna go into all the numbers and lay them out and all of that, but the point of me sharing this story is that a lot of people are scared to buy things used and I have had a couple of complications, but 95% of my gear was purchased used and bought way under market value. If I were to sell this Komodo, I know I can make profit on it, so it's not really like I lost anything. So that's one little thing I wanna encourage you guys with is don't be afraid to buy things used. Obviously be safe but you do not need to buy it new. But yeah, that's that story. I ended up getting that entire rig for six grand after buying a kit and selling off the parts that I didn't need and replacing them with parts that I actually wanted. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing because I will be putting out more content weekly, whether it's camera gear reviews or cinematic tips and lighting tutorials. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.